water on to boil and as you will see I've got some onion in there it's just to flavor the water just a little bit and then of course I personally I learned to add a little bit of oil you can add any kind of oil that you have I use olive oil or coconut oil in general I rarely have anything else in my house so that's that it will heat up in just a minute and we'll be ready to cook the pasta it's a piece of cake okay I am only doing this for the people that may not know how to cook really at all because most people that know how to cook anything will understand this already and so I'm trying to make this as basic as it can be so that anybody that wants to learn can learn. I don't want to ever treat everybody like they already should know anything because some people don't. So here we go. It's obviously getting ready to boil. Let's see if I can't turn on this light. I'm trying not to move the camera too much. I need to get a better stand for my camera, but it'll, it'll come in time. Uh, here we go. The water is boiling, so it's getting ready for the pasta. All right, I'm going to try to keep this as level as I can. Of course, you can use any kind of pasta that you wish. I personally use Dreamfields pasta, but as far as, I use it more for my boys. I usually, personally, I use cognac noodles, C-O-G-N-A-C. They are definitely an acquired texture. They're not so much, um... How is the word that I'm looking for they almost are kind of gummy and so they don't they don't have the same texture as noodles uh, but I do that for my diabetes but as far as for my children especially I use more Dreamfields pasta because oh, I'm sorry I'm totally blocking the camera I use more Dreamfields pasta because of the fact that it when it first cooks at least the first time that it is heated and cooked, it will, it has kind of a coating that is supposed to make it where your body cannot digest the carbohydrates. It does not do that for me, unfortunately. I, I don't have that same fortune whenever I use these noodles for myself. I do on occasion uh, because I still enjoy regular noodles, but I try to use more cognac noodles and I'm using just over a box maybe not quite one and a half boxes in general you would probably be able to use a regular one pound box of pasta it should be plenty for a 9 by 13 dish but since uh, Dreamfields pasta is only 13.25 ounces and of course you need those extra few ounces just to make it where it would be that pound so then I just put a few extra noodles and that will make it where it will fill the 9 by 13 pan obviously we got it boiling we're gonna let it boil for approximately 8 to 10 minutes I think that that's pretty typical for most pastas I'm gonna add a little bit of salt now that it's boiling I remember reading years ago that a lot of pots don't do well if you add salt before it boils. So I try to remember to leave salt off until it's boiling. So now I've got my stove. It's about to medium heat. Now that it's boiling, I'm going to add some salt, let it cook for a few minutes, and be right back. Okay, so while that pasta is boiling, might as well use your time. Make wise use of your time. I'm, I'm going to be honest, I do have other containers of Daisy sour cream in my fridge, but I'm too lazy to measure it out to make sure that it's 24 ounces, so I just get a brand new one every time that I make it. I'm not going to lie, because I'm lazy, so what? So long as it all gets used before the expiration date, right? That I do, I have no problem with. All right. So, I just take this, the whole thing goes into, I'm sorry, my blender. Whole thing. No sense in, alright. Next step, 
you can add obviously these things you can add in whatever order that you want no particular order is necessary a lot of times i prefer to put the bell peppers on the bottom because it seems like the liquidiness of it it gets blended a lot easier things like that give me one second i'm gonna stir these noodles make sure that hopefully they don't stick to the bottom of the pan or worse in some ways stick together all right here we go with that all right so then we're going to take these i don't generally keep i keep the juice in the can or uh whatever this thing is called all of a sudden my brain is farting so i apologize but this jar i usually leave the the juice of everything in the jar if some comes out with the peppers i don't care but i leave the juice in general in the jar because every once in a while it will be a strong enough bell pepper flavor most of the time it will be a strong enough bell pepper flavor even without that juice but on rare occasion i added a little bit too much of this or that so i added in the juice just to add for the flavor okay and there it's just you take the whole thing this is a 16 ounce jar okay and you can use whatever brand that you want but the other brands that I've seen in my local grocery stores are more 12 ounces, and since this is a 16 ouncer, I like it because it seems to bring out the bell pepper flavor a little bit better. But you can always use whichever kind that you prefer. All right, we're just about there. Okay. All right, that pretty much has got it all. All right, got all of it out. Oh, got one teeny little one in there. Yes, I am absolutely stingy enough that I will go back and get it. All right, so there we got that. A little good dash of that half and half makes it where it's nice and a, a little bit smoother. A little bit, uh, what's the word, more liquidy. Okay, then we get... I just like the creaminess of the mozzarella. So I just add a little bit of mozzarella cheese. I would not recommend doing a whole lot. I just do like a handful or so, maybe a handful and a half. One time I put a little bit too much, too much mozzarella cheese and it just, it really took away the flavor and I really did not enjoy it. My boys, they don't care, but that was that. So next, you're gonna wanna have some bouillon. I use bouillon that I've made but I used to use bouillon cubes I have used uh, the better than bouillon I've used them both uh, currently I use this just because it just is easier it's already made it's sugar free MSG free so there we go so there's that it's all in there I apologize this is kind of gone a little wacko so we have sour cream, half and half, red bell peppers, 16 ounces. It's 24 ounces of the uh, sour cream. I apologize. A good uh, chorro, it's, it's a, a, a dash or whatever of the half and half. Some mozzarella cheese and some bouillon, whichever kind that you use. And typically this will not be enough salt you usually have to add just a teeny little bit more salt which i will add right here um, because it usually needs it i have never ever made it that it didn't need a little extra salt but that's okay because the salt is just to complete the flavor whereas if you don't have the bouillon it will be missing i promise you need the bouillon absolutely no questions asked give me one second we'll blend this baby up okay i apologize i had to stop and get this stuff in the strainer here we go it is strained out because the pasta is done so there that's ready to go and now it is time to blend here we go let's see if i can get this at the right spot hopefully i'm sorry try not to move the phone too much so that it'll be easy to see all right here we go it's ready to roll we're gonna blend her up Give me one 
second. I apologize that this part of the video is a little disconnected from the rest, but I somehow did not record this the other day. And so once I went to editing it, I realized that I had not recorded it. So I'm just going to do a partial portion real quick so that I can show you what you would have missed had I not put it in there. The next part of making the spaghetti, and this is probably one of the reasons that it is so kid friendly, I believe, is, you know, what kid doesn't like hot dogs? Well, except for my younger, he would not even touch hot dogs when, up until a couple of years ago. You want to have them very thin. You can see it's very thinly sliced. Um, that's a little bit thicker, but it's still extremely thinly sliced. The best thing that you can do is a thin sliced, thin sliced hot dog. And of course, then you'll have those to line the bottom of your pan. And of course, I figure these hot dogs are not going to go to waste because I figure my boys will love to have them with some mac and cheese or something like that in the very near future. So I'll just put these in a baggie after I'm done. But you can see the general gist. That's what I'm actually recording for. So we're going to get this done. They'll be in the, in the dish for to put the pasta on top of in just a moment. Okay, so here we are. We're finished with this. We can put these into the dish. It's ready for the pasta to go on top. Of course, this is only half of the amount of hot dogs typically that you would want to have because I only did approximately half of the package of hot dogs, but here we go. So like I said, you can see they're very thinly sliced. That's the whole gist of it. Also, most Hispanics will include ham they don't not necessarily have to depends on what you have but whenever i remember i try to make sure to add ham in part because of the extra protein uh, especially without being whatever you want to call it so processed i know that hot type hot dogs even the quote unquote organic ones are highly processed so if you want to have a less processed meat then that's a good idea as well so I'm just, this particular ham I had gotten out of the package because it was only a little bit left and I figured that I would just do this like this because I'm too lazy to go and get a whole nother package right now. I didn't want to go and spend that kind of money at the store. Here we are. So there's that. So now that it's all approximately, uh, approximately even. We're just going to take it and slice it, dice it, whatever you want to call it, into small portions so that it is extremely bite-sized. Here we go with this. Sorry that I'm probably covering it up for most of y'all. I will show you in just one moment. Here we go. And it's all just finely diced, finely sliced, whatever you want to call it. And then obviously, as the same as what you would want to do with the hot dogs, you're going to want to have an even portion in your in your dish so that once you put the pasta around there that it's evenly typically evenly stirred up into the pasta. Oops, I sorry. All right, here we go. Let's see, and then of course you can just kind of do that as at will so that it's all good to go all right see you in a second all right next part we are going to add the sauce you don't even need to worry about how that the noodles look you're going to have to get it all mixed up pretty much in your hands anyway so it's kind of a moot point if you really worry about if you know when you're putting everything in there you just gotta there you go i will worry about whatever is in the bottom of the the blender in a few minutes but in the meantime I'm going to just start getting this to come apart so that I can get it mixed up with the sauce and the meat all right give me just a minute oh I apologize I'm not making it very easy to see okay I'm gonna try to keep this as steady as I can you're just gonna keep it mixing and mix it up with your hands all right give me just a minute 
Okay, here we go. It is all ready to get into the oven. You leave it uncovered, put it into the oven that's been preheated to 350. Okay, for right now, you're going to leave it in the oven cooking for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, you're going to want to kind of, I would call it stir, but you're going to move everything around because the top will start to get the hot dogs and the meat will start to get a little toasted and they can dry out and then they can look real burnt and get a burnt taste so you want to move it around but of course typically the pasta won't be completely reheated because after having been mixed with the uh with the refrigerator temperature mixture then it's going to cool down quite a bit so all right give it 15 minutes and we'll be ready to roll 15 minutes has passed so it is time to get this stuff uh, turned over a little bit. I will show you in just a moment. Here we go with this. And I'm going to just take these tongs and I'm going to get it moved around just like that so that we can put some of that more dried pasta on the bottom. I'm going to try to make it as close as I can without getting burnt. Especially in trying not to move this camera too much. I apologize. I'm still very amateur at this and still need some definite help on camera skills I'm sure but here we go just getting it all you could say kind of mixed back up putting the 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 moisture pasta right there on the top all over again there we go making sure that it's not going to dry out that's the most important thing because who wants old dry nasty pasta I don't know that I do. My kids probably wouldn't care. Your kids might not care, but any adult eating at the table is going to notice. So, there we go, and it's going to go back in for another 15 minutes so that it can warm completely through. All right? All right, so it is done. We are going to check it. Look. All right, here we go. Beautiful, beautiful. All ready to eat. It should be plenty warm, ready to roll. So, time to enjoy. Talk to y'all later.